So as I was thinking about this gospel story this week, I got to wondering about whether, well, this is one of my favorite stories from the gospel, from the gospels, but I was wondering if there ever has been somebody who was blind who ever was able to receive their sight. And as I did some research, I learned there have been a few, not many, a few people who have had their sight given to them when they were born blind. Usually it happens through some, obviously, some kind of surgery, some intervention when they're younger. There was a woman in India, for example, who was born almost completely blind. She could uh, tell the difference between night and dark, night and day. That was about it. <laughs> and um, she had surgery when she was 12. They were able to restore her eyesight in one eye to almost uh, full sight. Oh, so overnight, this woman was transported from darkness to light, literally. This new experience of being able to see, and she's been able to maintain that sight for some 25 years. But her mother reported that she wasn't able to really distinguish things right away. She had trouble, their brain was having trouble processing that information. And that's normal, right? And the, the brain, when it gets new information, new sensory information, it has to learn to make sense of it. So people who have their sight restored don't necessarily understand what it is that they're looking at immediately. For example, they may, you may give them a salt shaker and they may know, well, what it feels like. They know a salt shaker or what it smells like, but they don't necessarily know what it looks like. We even have a biblical witness to this in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, where a blind man is healed by Jesus, and Jesus says, what do you see? And he says, well, I see people, but they look like trees walking. So they don't necessarily understand what it is that they see. But what a joyous occasion. What a miracle, this man, having received his sight. That raises a question for us to consider this morning. Do we always see things as they really are? Do we ever make mistakes? Do we ever confuse things? Do we ever misperceive what it is that we see? What's true I have come to observe in my life is that in the heat of the moment, and just ask three people who have witnessed an accident, people don't always see the same thing or perceive it the same way. Reminds me of a story. There was a, a husband and wife, Tom and Emily. Tom loved to go deer hunting. Hunting was his passion. His wife begged him for years to take her along, and he didn't want to because that was his, his sanctuary, his opportunity to be in the woods by himself. But finally, after years of her continuing to ask, Tom finally relents. He takes her to one of his favorite spots. He sets her up in an area where he knows there's a lot of deer, but also she's going to have clear vision if a deer comes upon. He walks maybe 400, 500 yards in the woods away, and he's there for about five minutes when he hears two shots coming from the direction of his wife. And he thinks to himself, oh no, if she gets a deer before me, I'll never hear the end of it. So he starts to slowly walk back towards the direction of his wife when he hears his wife shouting, get away from my deer. So he starts to walk a little faster. And as he comes upon his wife, he hears her shouting, he, said, uh, he hears her shouting again, back away from my deer. And she's pointing her rifle at a man who's got his hands up in the air. The man says, look lady, you can have the deer but can I get my saddle off of it first? <laughs> I get my saddle off of it first. See, we don't always understand what it is that we see. We can misperceive things if we admit it. And this seems to be the problem of the Pharisees and the Jews and the neighbors of the blind man. Can we blame them? The man who was identified now as formerly blind he says at best, never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. In other words, no one had ever before been 
healed, re had their sight, received their sight. So it's no wonder that these Pharisees and the Jews and the neighbors are skeptical. But the truth is about this, one of the reasons I love this gospel story is because there's so many layers. There's so much going on. There's layers of meaning, layers of conversation, layers of understanding and misunderstanding. In our gospel lesson, we have this ongoing interrogation of the man who has been healed. He's interrogated by the Pharisees. He's interrogated by the Jews, by his neighbors. Even his own parents seem to throw up their hands and say, you know what, we don't know what's going on, but we don't want to deal with it. There's so much going on, and yet, not one person, not one person celebrates with this man who has received his sight that he's not had since he was born. This new vision, this new lease on life, something that's never been experienced by anybody before. No one is celebrating. But he is getting a lot of questions and ridicule and scorn. To be blind, to me, would be the same as living in a dark prison. To be freed from that prison, what a joy that would be. The blind man says it best. One thing I know, though I was blind, now I can see. You can hear the joy in his voice. The man moves from blindness to sight, not just physical blindness, but he moves from spiritual blindness to spiritual understanding. We see it throughout this story. The man first refers to Jesus as that man, and then he's a prophet. And by the end of the story, he's referring to, a, to, to Jesus as son of man and Lord, and he's worshiping him. And the Pharisees are moving in the opposite direction. They're going from what they think they have spiritual sight to as Jesus confronts them as their spiritual blindness. They move from their law-oriented teaching and Sabbath regulations religion, which they believe gives them true sight. They move to what Jesus highlights as their own blindness. And maybe that's the point of the story. Maybe that's the point of the story that we should carry away today, allowing our encounters with Jesus to move us from our own spiritual blindness, our own spiritual darkness, to being children of light. Think back to the stories that we've had just in the last couple of weeks. We had the story of Nicodemus, the Pharisee, who comes to Jesus at night in physical darkness. And with his encounter with Jesus, he has a formative journey. He moves from his understanding to Jesus saying about you have to be born from above of water and the spirit. And then we have the woman at the well who comes for water to drink and Jesus gets her to ask for living water. And then she goes to her community to invite everyone to come and see, could this be the Messiah? And then we have this man today who was born blind and through all of their encounters, all of them, their encounters with Jesus, who meets them where they are, meets them in their comfort zone. Through their encounter with Jesus, he invites them to deeper spiritual meanings. Their lives are changed dramatically. He invites them and us into the mystery of God. A God who loves us so much. And yet so many from the story remain blind to that reality. So it presents us with another question to consider. How can we help others come to the light of Christ? How do we help others see? How, how do we see more clearly ourselves? I would say that it begins with learning to reframe what it is that we see and how we see. This is, you see, what causes a stumbling block for the Pharisees. They cannot reframe what they see. Jesus is too human. He's too much a sinner to be the Messiah. The man born blind states that Jesus healed him. And rather than congratulate him, rather than celebrating with this miracle or thanking God, they get hung up on the fact that Jesus healed them. When? On the Sabbath. 
You see, Jesus had to make mud, and so he mixed his saliva, he said to the children. They believed saliva had healing properties. He had to mix his saliva with the dirt. And in doing so, he needed to mix it. He needed to knead it like kneading dough. And that was a violation of Sabbath rules, which to me just seems ridiculous. But that's my 21st century understanding. That's not a first century Jewish understanding. In their logic, Jesus is a sinner, and if he's a sinner, then he cannot be from God. It's a real conundrum for them. Could they reframe their vision, how their view of God and how God wants to work in the world? Could they reframe their vision? Obviously not, because in the end, we know the end of the story. They'll put Jesus to death for sedition, for insurrection, for claiming to be the Messiah and threatening the good order of their religious teachings. He didn't fit their vision of how God works. And so Jesus said they were blind. Here's an exercise for us to do. I've given uh, the ushers something to hand out to you. I'm going to give them a minute. Ready, set, go. They're going to hand you a piece of paper. I want you to look at it. I want you to look at it. And I want you to think about what it is that you see. If you've seen this before, just keep your comments to yourself. I do have some for the, do you have some for the choir? I do have some for the choir here. Well, go ahead. Do you have any, any more? Uh, let's see, what did Pastor Nick do with If you've seen this before, if you've seen this before, don't tell, don't tell. And anybody, now that you've seen it, Can anybody decipher the message? If you know, don't say anything. I hear somebody behind me. It's not Mr. Ducks. All right. Okay, you ready? Here we go. MR Ducks. You get it? There's a there's another one. There's another one, MR mice. MR mice, MR not, O S A R, C M E D B D feet. L I B, MR mice. What appears to be random letters or some code is actually just a little simple story. But it takes having someone reframe your understanding to see what is there in front of you. That's what being transformed by the Holy Spirit means. When transformed by Christ, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we see differently. Do you need refocusing in your life? Do you need to reframe your relationship with God? Are you having trouble seeing, seeing Jesus in your life, seeing the Holy Spirit working in your life, seeing your neighbors as people worthy of God's love, seeing yourself as worthy of God's love, seeing the need for Jesus in your daily existence? Well then, my friends, welcome to Lent. Are you tired of me saying that yet? Welcome to Lent. Lent is to be a time where we take time to see if we need a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift. What could he mean? Well, can we see, for example, the cross of Jesus as a beautiful thing rather than as, a, as an implement of torture and agony and death? Can we really understand Good Friday as good? Take time this Lent to pray that your relationship with Jesus helps to move you from darkness to light, from blindness to sight, from confusion to insight. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And Paul says, as children of the light, we need to live that way. Paul actually says something like, if you can talk the talk, can you walk the walk? 
In other words, we should use Lent to come to a better understanding of what it means to live as Christ calls us to live, not in darkness, not in isolation, not looking to meet our own needs, but living in the light of goodness and righteousness and truth. We can only discern that kind of living by discerning our own behaviors, our own priorities, our own prejudices, and living in the spirit of Christ. You see, we're called to see the light of Christ in everyone. Everyone. And if we live in the light of Christ, then we need to discern if we do see, if we really do see the needs in front of us, the needs of our neighbors, the needs of our community. Jesus asked a man who was formerly blind this eternal question. He asks him, do you believe? And if you and I believe, then shouldn't we walk the walk? Shouldn't we seek to invite a friend to come and see? To invite a stranger to come and see? Because you see, here, the lost are found. And here, well, the blind, they can see. Amen? Amen. Amen.